Film Dispatch, launched by the leftist journalist Tom Engelhardt in 2001, is one of the most successful online media projects of the American left. Engelhardt, a former anti-war activist from a middle-class Jewish family, is also a graduate of Yale with a master's from Harvard. His background is in publishing, having worked at Pantheon and edited Art Spiegel's famous graphic novel, Mouse. But he also teaches at Berkeley, California. Part of the Nation Institute, Tom Dispatch is somewhere between a blog and a news site and a long-form review journal. Every couple of days or so, Tom Dispatch publishes a Tom Graham, that is a more or less lengthy blog post containing an introductory statement, followed by a detailed article about some aspect of the state of the world, from the drones program to the destruction of Detroit. Its articles are then syndicated on the well-known liberal magazine Salon, reviewed previously on this program. What is notable about these articles is the sheer detail and texture, the amount of information and context crammed into each one. In many cases, the articles form part of a series building up to a book project wherein notable Tom Dispatch writers like Nick Terse and Rebecca Solnit will test their ideas with the website's readers before publishing them in book format. The website also publishes a range of already established writers from Lewis Lapham, former editor of Harper's Magazine, to the late Eduardo Galliano. The result is that Tom Dispatch punches well above its weight in cultural terms, contributing many of the ideas, the intellectuals, the key books, which provide central points of reference for the American left. Out of what ferment did Tom Dispatch emerge? In the beginning was the war. And in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, as President Bush began to ramp up the preparations for a global offensive to assert American dominance, Tom Engelhardt began to create what was at first an email list, forwarding news clippings and lengthy commentaries from Engelhardt to a growing list of friends. The themes were much as they would continue to be. The extraordinary centralization of political authority by the Bush administration, the crackdown on civil liberties, and the misinformation and false history being used to justify war. As the liberal magazine Mother Jones explains in an interview with Tom Engelhardt, the list was given a home in a website hosted by the Nation Institute in November 2002, just as the Bush administration was twisting arms and facts in order to invade Iraq, and the American left was mobilizing to try to stop it. The website's remit was to give ballast to the anti-war left, giving a voice to activists, and excoriating the reactionaries and neocons in charge. The articles thus followed the Iraq war from every angle, from profiteering and death to the disgrace of conformist embedded journalism. As the war began, Engelhardt mordantly observed the enthralled television coverage. The equivalent of penis envy on American wartime TV turns out to be weapons envy. America's latest weaponry is presented in elegant graphics. The planes and missiles pirouette slowly, elegantly, like so many dancers, as commentators lovingly describe. Caress wouldn't be too strong a word, them. One announcer spoke of the package being inserted. But the website also, unlike a great deal of American liberal commentary at the time, alighted on Israel's persecution of the Palestinians. Likewise, it was quite critical of so-called humanitarian interventions in a way that many opponents of Bush's wars were not. For example, in 2007, it published an interview with Boston Globe journalist James Carroll, which pointed out that the liberal embrace of humanitarian intervention is part of what set loose this new phenomenon of the Bush moment. The war on Iraq was partly made possible by liberal warmongering. So when a section of liberal opinion began to demand military intervention into Sudan, ostensibly to end the violence in Darfur, Tom Dispatch looked at Darfur as a resource war and published a detailed assessment of the US government's oil politics in Sudan, suggesting that perhaps Iraq was not the only place where American governments might try to control the oil spigot. And aside from war, there was always an accompanying, albeit subdued, theme, which was the Bush administration's class war against the poor. At the peak of the anti-war movement and the Bush administration's belligerence, the average posting, usually consisting of a long comment piece, often with a lengthy introduction, gained 100,000 page views. Today, it's closer to 9,000 page views per day. With the website flourishing in 2004, Engelhardt co-founded the American Empire Project, under which rubric a series of books would be published by Metropolitan Books, 
taking a critical look at American foreign policy, the empire building abroad, and the national security state at home, with authors including Noam Chomsky, Greg Grandin, Chalmers Johnson, and Jonathan Schell. The logic of expanding to book publishing was partly explained by Engelhardt in an interview with the University of California Television. He pointed out that the rise of the political right, visible since the 70s, could actually be traced to an intellectual ferment in the 60s, when right-wing activists began to put a lot of effort into the word, writing, think tanks, books, and intellectual work. By contrast, the left had subsequently retreated into a priestly academic caste. But in the fervor of anti-war activism, the left was becoming relevant again. As Engelhardt put it, I am a small part of the beginning of a process of taking the word back. Remarkably, in a way, and quite unlike a lot of liberal opposition under the Bush administration, Tom Dispatch has continued the tradition of trenchant critique based on muckraking reporting and detailed analysis well into the Obama era. Just because there was a Democrat in charge and, as Engelhardt put it in an interview titled Drone Warfare and the United States of Fear in Guernica magazine, Imperial Dreamers had been replaced by Imperial Managers, was no reason to forget that America was an empire. Indeed, one of Engelhardt's most recent books, Shadow Government, about the accumulation of executive power under the current administration, compiles his Tom Dispatch essays taking aim at the Obama White House. For example, in an essay called A Global Profiling President, looking at how this country's first African-American constitutional law professor, liberal Oval Office holder, became the most imperial of all recent imperial presidents, he points out that Obama has few constraints. No one can stop him or countermand his orders. He has a bevy of lawyers at his beck and call to explain the legality of his actions. And if he cares to, he can send a robot assassin to kill you, whoever you are, no matter where you may be on the planet Earth. He sounds like a typical villain from a James Bond novel. Likewise, Tom Dispatch has hosted a number of articles looking at Obama's drone wars, subsequently republished by Engelhardt and Terse as a volume of essays. As the authors told the History News Network in an interview on the past, present, and future of drones, this was necessary because the media, with only a few exceptions, was failing to report the very significant escalation in the rate of civilian deaths and destruction caused by drones. Every area where drones are being used, they said, things are getting worse. And what's more, the figures that were available were likely minimal, serious underestimates due to the lack of journalistic scrutiny. One of Tom Dispatch's current reporting concerns is the Obama administration's bid to increase the US presence in Africa. While the strategic pivot to Asia has been widely reported, the ramping up of AFRICOM's activities to record levels has gone unnoticed. Earlier this year, the website looked at the US military's battlefield of tomorrow and reported, for years, the US military has publicly insisted that its efforts in Africa are negligible, intentionally leaving the American people, not to mention most Africans, in the dark about the true size, scale, and scope of its operations there. AFRICOM public affairs personnel and commanders have repeatedly claimed no more than a light footprint on the continent. Behind closed doors, however, AFRICOM's officers speak quite a different language. They have repeatedly asserted that the continent is an American battlefield and that, make no bones about it, they are already embroiled in an actual war. One of Tom Dispatch's most recent revelations in this area concerns the widespread sexual abuse of women across the continent of Africa by soldiers working under AFRICOM. The means by which this story was brought to light is characteristic of how Tom Dispatch increasingly works. The journalist Nick Terse used freedom of information requests to pursue legal documents and files from criminal investigations into the behavior of US troops. To this extent, it was good old-fashioned muckraking, following up on some hints which had appeared in the press. But Terse was not just interested in one scoop. This was part of a book-length treatment of the American struggle to gain strategic control of the African continent from secret troop deployments to intelligence operations to the seam of criminal behavior by some of its highest ranking troops. And so what it has presented is a series of high quality pieces of investigative journalism such as is increasingly rare in the world of the corporate press amid what Nick Javies calls journalism, wherein quantity, 
filling newsprint space with as few staff and in as little time as possible matters more than quality. But as with the previous incumbent, Tom Dispatch is not simply concerned with the war and the state. In truth, it has considerably broadened its horizons in recent years with coverage of what Francis Box Piven called the war on the home front, the theft of public resources by the banks, the Occupy movement, racist cop violence, the feminist struggle, and all the issues that have come to the fore in post-credit crunch America. In a way, it's quite remarkable what Tom Dispatch has sought to do and has achieved. With relatively few resources, it has taken the long-form journalistic essay as its mode at a time when the internet was supposed to be reducing the attention span of audiences and condensing everything into 140 character bursts. It has been unashamedly popular and accessible without being afraid of intellect. It has combined muckraking and polemic, history and journalism, and maintained a consistently radical edge. And that is why Tom Dispatch is an icon of the American left.